Running. Right, welcome to another episode of the Sussex Non-League podcast where we take a look at all things non-league in Sussex. I'm Matt Pohl and I'm joined by Sussex sport guru Steve Bone and a very special guest. Uh, this week we are delighted to have with us Eastbourne Borough owner Simon Leslie, who has been at the home at uh, Helm, sorry, at Priory Lane uh, since the summer. Uh, we'll get Simon's take on his first nine months in charge of the sports and bring you all the latest from the local non-league scene here in Sussex. Uh, first and foremost, Simon, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you getting on? It's an absolute pleasure. I am at home as well as at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Um, but as we mentioned uh, in, our, in our intro, um, you've been at the helm at Borough now for about nine months or so. Um, how would you sum up your time in charge so far? <laughs> uh, difficult question, that. <laughs> yeah. It's been turbulent. I've, mm. I've definitely had an MBA in, in soccer ownership. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Uh, there have been some high moments and there's been a lot of lows. I, I guess a roller coaster, right? So I'm up and down. One minute I feel like we're, uh, you know, we're, we're in Nirvana and next minute it's... Uh, emergency ward 10 with more injuries than anyone else can cope with and uh started again this week and uh, we can we can talk about that as well but uh it, it it's it's a brutal business you know there's 72 mm. clubs in the uh in the national league all of the owners i imagine have made a fair bit of money or been quite successful in some some business or not but yet none of them can turn a profit probably with the exception of Maidstone this year, um, at running a football club. And, and that mm. doesn't make any sense to me. So it can't be, um, it can't just be all our fault. It must be, then, you know, the system is a little bit broken. And, you know, I'm, I want to be the vocal one who's trying to fix it. What, um, of, of all the challenges you've faced since taking over, what, what have been the hardest? What have been perhaps the most unexpected Ones and, ha and have there been more sort of unexpected things than you than you expected? Foresaw? It was tales of the yeah. unexpected. <laughs> I, th I think the injuries we've been really unlucky with injuries, um, the, and you can point the finger at anybody you like. And was it your recruitment? Was it your S and C? Was it this? Was it that? Was it the other? Was it the weather? Was it the way the wind's blown? Um, I just think we've been generally quite unlucky um, because what, what you know, we had a squad of 21, 22 and then all of a sudden we've had to, we've had to use something like 45 players over the, over the course of the season. And you can't not pay the, the original 21. You've got to pay both sets. So that was definitely a, a financial shock. You know, the fans moaning and complaining, you know, they've got full right to do. We haven't delivered on, on the pitch. So that, you know, that's par for the course. I, I think it's really just, you know, the the effects of um, the injuries, poor refereeing, um, which is which every single owner, chairman, manager, CEO, um, and anybody else will listen to them and will complain about. And it's it's the inconsistency in the um in the refereeing at this level we are we've been given we're like a training ground so either you're good enough and you get nicked up towards the league or you stay here because you're not good enough and if you're not good enough in the league they they drop you down here and it's like it's like the naughty boys club <laughs> well um how, how, are you, how do you see things now simon uh, seven points from the last nine suggest the team is on the up do you, you must sincerely think that this team can very well keep the sports in, in the National League South with the way things are going at the moment? I've, I've never really felt, you know, I don't talk about the recession word or the R word. Um, <laughs> I, I never I never talked about recessions yeah. when they were going on either. Because, you know, I, I, fundamentally, I think we've got a good team. I think the team is probably the strongest it's been now under Andrew Adam and Adam, Adam's leadership. Um. And our form is mid-table to top, you know, mid to top of the mm. table form right now. So let's see how we carry that on. We were we were unbelievable on Tuesday night until the uh, the <coughs> excuse me the unforeseen injury to to Alex, and um, I think we would have gone on and won that game as well. So um, we we were beating Slough three-one last time we played them when I left. I had to leave for a flight, 
and we ended up drawing three all. So <laughs> tomorrow we can we can make up for giving them the, that three points. Absolutely. I was going to ask you about um, a little bit about Adam Murray. Obviously, you made a change. You had a change of manager mid-season, and I know when Mark Beard left, he, it was quite amicable, and you know he, he left with your best wishes. It just didn't work out for him for different reasons. Adam and the management team you've got in place now. What what is it about them that make you think they are the right people to take the club forward and to deliver what you want to see delivered? Well, Mark's been to the last three games. Um, obviously, Sam is is still playing for us, and uh, you know, I, I'm I'm always looking for opportunities to help Mark. You know, I wanted to give Mark his first real management role. Um, I probably stayed way too loyal, but that you know. I'm not embarrassed by that. You know, I wanted, you know, this was part of my commitment to doing what I'm doing, which is to help the players, help the managers, give everyone an opportunity to shine. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, I think I think with, with Adam, he's like a mad professor. <laughs> you know, his attention to detail on the pitch and his ability to read a game of football is unreal. I mean, even, you know, some of his management team will say to me, you know, he's some of the best we've worked with. He's he's just he is unbelievable at seeing the game and 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 setting them up. I think he's a, um, a he's more of a leader, more of a a boss. Let's put it that way. So mm. there's, there's slightly, you know, I think Mark was definitely very much one of the lads, and I think he's created that little bit of difference. You know, I, I've spent the last thirty years as a as a man manager building teams. Giving to people who who didn't have the talent confidence that they did they could they could be something special. So that's what I've always done. So that's what I wanted to bring to to football. And if I can complement that with Adam's attention to detail on the pitch, then we can build something really really special. I've oh, no doubt. Oh, sorry, Steve. Sorry, yeah, just as a little supplementary to that, I guess you've you've got quite a large number of young players. So having yeah. having the sort of leader, the boss type character is important for them. You know, they, they need a certain amount of sort of authority and discipline. And and you must feel he's he's the right type of manager to help them develop as players and as people. Hundred percent. I mean he's been managing or assistant with some of the some of the greatest managers, you know. The Watford manager's name I can never remember, um, but obviously he came from Cheltenham, which was a League One team. And when he went to Cheltenham, they were bottom of the league with no points or something. And when he left, they had <coughs> they certainly get themselves closer to getting out of trouble. So I'll tell you what the other thing that that, that I, I noticed this week is when he brought Matt Green in. When Matt worked with him at Mansfield, he's an old pro, played hundreds of games in the league. And and the work that Matt's been doing with the younger players as well, showing them stuff, you know, one on one, and and we've not asked him to do this, but it's that's the thing that we've probably been missing to have that, you know, that seniority mm -hmm. and that support within the within the changing room. Not so not doesn't come from the manager, but comes from the players themselves. And I've been super impressed with um, what he's brought to the team, and uh, I can't wait for him to, to to get on the pitch and score some goals as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm sure you have your immediate goals this season, Simon, but what is the long term or your long term vision for the club? How how do you keep Borough growing? And, and is it a case of you having something akin to like a five year plan of growth for the club or is it step by step at the moment? I think it'd be nice to have a five day plan that doesn't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a I have a I have a a a big vision of what we want this club to be. We want um I'm terribly, terribly sorry. I got this horrible cough that won't go away. It's a hundred days. I'm only twenty five days in. Um, <laughs> Just don't pass it on to the players. Yeah, as I keep staying away from them. So the the um, to, to have an epicenter of well being, biohacking, um, testing. So we 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 become somewhere where some of the latest technology can come in and they can they can test it on players. And I'm working with. Uh, biosynergy. I'm working with um, Cryobrite in in Brighton. So there's a lot, there's a lot, <coughs> a lot of stuff that we're doing. Human regenerator. These are machines that I want to bring to to Eastbourne and and encompass within our facilities. But I've got the challenges of 
electricity board, not having enough electricity. The planner is not giving me a green light on my planning vision. Um, and, and then beyond that is to, to you know, really have a, a well-being centre where people can come, recover, regenerate. Um, and, and also we, we can incorporate <coughs> so many more players um, who are getting released by the academies. You know, I'm, mm. I'm very much mm. on the, on the cost of that. Um, and I, and I want to I want to give them that second chance. And we had, a, you know, we had great success with Fletcher, and he was on the bench for Wolves in the FA Cup at the weekend. So we were all very yeah. proud. Um, and and if we can right. do that more and more times, and I think the more times you do that, more and more players want to come here because they can see they're going to get the exposure, they're going to get the spotlight, and then there's more chance of them getting to where they want to get to. Absolutely. I've got a, a just a, a sort of a sideways question for you, really. Um, if I, if I let's say I came to an Eastbourne Borough game, and we were having a chat in the boardroom, and I said, Simon, need to confide in you. I'm thinking of buying a non-league football club. <laughs> would what would you say to someone who said that to you? Would you knowing what you know now? Would you say yes? Would you say no? And if you would say yes, what advice would you give them? Um, wow. <laughs> Sorry, put you on the spot with that one. <laughs> I think the um, everybody who I spoke to said, "Don't buy it. Don't do it. Mm. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're just going to burn your cash." And they were right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I guess I'd have to give the same advice, but, but at the same time, I think when you see so many green shoots, you see rewards of 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 the mm. work that you're doing. Um. Both myself and Alan have been doing interviews, and, and and our message is consistent. We both want the same objective for the for for the project at Eastbourne, and we've been getting the nicest emails from fans of people saying, "Ignore ignore, you know, the minority, the majority mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. love what you're doing." Um, and, and and honestly, I, I can't tell you that some of the emails are so nice. I, I you know. I sit with a box of tissues sometimes and I'm like, I can't believe what they're saying because mm. you know we really are making a difference. You know, the for the um even the walking football team played at Arsenal last week and uh, they beat Arsenal 4-1. And I just think that before I come along, none of these sort of opportunities would have come out because everybody was focused on on the one team. Even mm. the women's you know, they went eight from eight in the last eight games. They've had a really good uh, year, haven't they? Mm. Mm. And we really want to we want to push them onwards and keep investing in that. So it's not you know whilst the first team is is the one everybody's focusing on, we are investing through the club. Um, our spirit of football team is doubling in size. So every everyone's important. It's not just the first team, but obviously we're measured by how successful the first team do. And uh, and I think if we can continue this form that we're in now. Then we we will be in a good place wherever whatever league we're in next year. Oh, well, you haven't mentioned it there, but the women's team have had a really wonderful season, haven't they, Simon? Tell us a little bit how they've been um, getting on this season. Well, we, we, we you know we changed the manager management <coughs> team there as well mid season. They hadn't won a game, I think, when Billy came in. Uh, Billy's been around uh, in in East Sussex football. Obviously, was successful at Hastings and Haywards Heath. And he lives around the corner, so this is a lot more convenient for him. <coughs> and and honestly, he he's made some great signings, and 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 they're doing really well. And not only they're doing really well, they they're attracting quite good crowds for the mm. for their for their games, especially at this level of football. <coughs> some of the games are played on, you know, park pitches. It's not so 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 when when they do play at home, they've been scoring six, seven, eight goals, and. And it's like, you know, it, it's Instagram friendly goals as well. It's not like tappings, you know, sort of shots from outside the box landing in the top corner. So no, it's been brilliant. And this Saturday, see Burrow go down to Slough. Uh, how do you see that one going? Have you, you looked rephrase, like that? Can you rephrase that, please. Sorry? Can you rephrase that. I didn't like the way you said that. <laughs> well, Eastbourne <laughs> Burrow will be travelling to Slough. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I have to rephrase yeah. that. Um, Oh, so how do you see that one going? Um, I'm hoping you've not booked any uh, flights uh, 20 minutes before the, yeah. uh, the game ends. No, we'll do that. I'm going to save it to the very end. Um, <laughs> I mean, Slough have had a great run and they're doing really well at the minute. They're in form as well. 
So it'll be two form teams going, you know, head to head, and I and, I, and I'm I'm excited. I mean, it's been a weird week. You know, we mm. we were on, we were on Sky News this week. Breaking news um, for mm. our game being abandoned. Mm. And what's really disappointing about this whole thing is that no one from the league's reached out. I mean, all the teams, only two people haven't reached out to us. Truro basically caused the, the issue of having no medical uh, facilities at, at the ground, which was really, really poor because, you know, I was stressed out. If I'd had a heart attack in that ground, Nothing would have nothing would have happened, and and it's part of our, you know, part of the rules. You've got to have a medical team there. And, and what I think is really unfair at the minute, you've got Taunton, which are clearly trading insolvently. They're not paying their team. They're not paying their staff. And then you've got Truro, you know, got all these games. They're ground sharing, and they're not taking the rules seriously. And I just think that's you know. Then you've got Torquay, which are actually you know in administration. Mm. And, it, and it's not fair. It's an unfair trading condition. Um, and, I, and I don't think mm. that teams who are behaving like this should should be allowed to, to stay in the league when other, you know, when the rest of us are all paying our staff, paying our, you know, paying our taxes, doing everything we should be properly. And I don't think that's, uh, I don't think the league are taking it seriously enough. And we, we've heard nothing from the league, not a, you know, how's your player? What's going on? Is he all right? What happened on... And I just think that's unacceptable, really, in this day and age. Two, uh, two things I'll just chip in with there. Uh, just for balance, we should say that we have asked, um, I contacted Truro yesterday for a comment on the complaint that you've made about the sort of medical cover that was that was at the game. Haven't heard, haven't heard back from them yet, but but we hope to at some point. Um, and, and can we ask now, how is Alex? How, is Alex mm. doing okay? Is he on the road to recovery? <coughs> He's going to be, be out for a while, I believe, isn't he? Oh, excuse me. Um, he's, he's having an operation tomorrow, um, so you know that tells you the severity of it. That he's having an immediate operation. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what, you know, if, how, and what, and how long he'll be back. But he's definitely going to be out for a while. Mm. Um, certainly won't see him again this season. And uh, you know, and, and it's so disappointing. He was on the ground for nearly an hour in the rain. Um, and, and it, if it hadn't been for our CEO, who basically coordinated everything, got the ambulance out, and uh, they had to inject him with morphine on the pitch, you know, they did a, they did a brilliant job, the ambulance service. And uh, but then our players had to carry him on the stretcher to the ambulance. You know, all, all these little things, and you know, I know the referee was struggling, and and his linesman because of seeing what he saw, I think his knee was completely uh, twisted. Yeah. Uh, and, and I just don't think you people realise how how much effect that had on the players. And some of the players were crying, and it was like it's mm. it's, it's a horrible. Yeah, and, mm. and if there'd been someone medically trained, I mean, this is this is a, this is what they actually said. Oh, bar, Bob behind the bar, he's he's a first aider. And I'm like, this isn't a first aid job. This is uh, we need someone with some gas in there. Mm. Yeah. And, well, and had, had they been there, we could have got him off the pitch. We could have finished the game. And you know, it's not. It, but it, but at least he would have been warm and you know in a much more comfortable mm. situation. But um, so yeah, they they really let him down. They've let their, their club down, as far as I'm concerned, and they've certainly let us down. Yeah, well, obviously we want to give all our best to Alex, and obviously best of luck to Borough uh, this Saturday. Thank you very much for joining us, Simon. If you can stick around while me and chat, uh, Steve chat all things Sussex non-league. Um, we now know who will face Horsham in the Sussex Senior Cup final following last week's semi-final showdown between Hastings and Littlehampton. Uh, Steve Bowen, who came out on top in that one? And, um, yeah, do you think there's a clear favourite for this final? This, um, um, I think it might be the most exciting final in years. Yeah, looking forward to it, actually. So Hastings beat Littlehampton 3-0. Um, quite comfortable, according to their manager, Chris Agata. Well, I spoke to Mitch Hand this week, uh, the Littlehampton joint boss, and he was saying he'll, he'll sort of look back on that semi-final with some regret for a while because they did have, he, he felt they did have chances, you know, while, while they were still in the game. And if one of those had gone in, could have been very different. 
and they have caused a couple of cap upsets this season. So, you know, they, they were they were perhaps a little bit unlucky and, and can think about what might have been. But Hastings are through. So we've got Horsham against Hastings. We've got two Isthmian Premier teams going up against each other. Um, and it, it looks on paper like it, it should be pretty close. It, it's nice to have two teams in the final that haven't been in the final for a while. Uh, we need Eastbourne Borough to get their Simon soon again in, in the next year or two. That, I'm sure that will happen. Um, I, I, it's a bit of a personal battle between you and me, Matt, isn't it, really? Because it you is. speak to them every week. I speak to Chris Agatha every week. Clearly, Hastings are going to win. So I don't, you know, I don't think we need to have any further debate. I actually think Hastings... What might work in Hastings' favour is that Horsham have had a very, very long, long season, season, just the sheer number of games they've played. That's going to be the final game. It's going to be a week or two after the last league game. It might just be one game too many for them. But I'm sure Don will have other ideas and, and Horsham will be able to give Hastings a, um, a good game. Looking forward to it, though. Yeah, absolutely. It does beat the normal, and I mean, not to, uh, what's the word, disparage these teams, but normally it's Brighton under 23s against Crawley, isn't it, Steve? And it's nice to see... Yeah. Proper non-league teams contest this final. Yes. Um, before we talk about uh, Worthing's um, National League South form, uh, Simon, you said you've got something else you'd like to add about Adam H. Yeah, I mean, one thing I, I forgot to mention, you know, we, we, we sold um, Leon Gravata to, to York, mm. and I guess Adam knew him from his time at Worthing and watched him play. Um, I think one thing that was really disappointing was that after his first game, which was only, I think, about 30 minutes, Adam went on his interview and really slated him. And I just think that, you know, you just bought a player. It's his first first outing. He's gone up a league. It's, you know, it's probably the highest level he's played. Give the kid a chance. You know, he could have said anything. He could have said, you know, OK, it was his first chance. Didn't do brilliantly. You know, I'm, I know he's going to be a great player for the club. But he was absolutely... Right, but it's vulgar. Really, and it's, and it's disappointing to me because this is what this game was about. It's about developing these players, giving them, giving them an opportunity to play the best ability they can, and then you can't torture them as soon as they have one bad game. And um, I don't know what's going to happen there. And I, I'm, I was really disappointed because I actually thought Adam was uh, generally a nice chap, and I thought it'd be very good for for Leon to go there as well. Well, I would, mm. I would say, I would just chip in there and I, I'm quite surprised to hear he said, I didn't see that interview. I'm quite surprised no. at that because in all the times I've spoken to Adam when he was Worthing manager, he's always been very sort of fair-minded uh, about players and, and, you know, reticent about being critical of individuals, really. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe the sort of pressure of the start he's had at York City might might have come into that there. Um, they have now had their first win, haven't they? So, hopefully yeah. things turn around for him, but... Um, yeah, good, good luck to Leon. I hope, hopefully, it'll work out for Leon up there. Mm. I hope he gets another chance because um, you know he's a great kid, great player, and you know, and I, and I, and I like all of them. You know, anyone who's played for me or been part of this project, I'm constantly messaging them and just trying to keep them enthused. And uh, mm. you know, one, one, you know, one of the challenges of me is that I'm there and I want to see people succeed and do well, no matter where they're playing. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Um, you've mentioned Adam Hinchwood there, uh, formerly of Worthing, Steve. Um, how has he been getting on at York City? When he was appointed, uh, the Mincemen were very much mired in a rele uh, relegation battle in the National League. Um, how's he been getting on? They Well, they still are. Um, he's had, I think I'm right in saying he's had four games so far. Last Saturday was his first win. They had a very late mm. winner. Uh, and that has put them there. So they're in the bottom four. They're in the top, of, top spot in the bottom four. Um, but it's very tight. I, I looked at the table earlier and there's something like 11 clubs, including some above and some below the line, separated by about six points. So it's going to be a real battle to the death, I think, in, in that division. Um, you know, clearly he's, he's gone up there with the short term aim of keeping them up. That's part of what he's gone there for after they change their manager. That's the first thing. He, that's all he'll be focused on at the moment. Um, and I would think that win last Saturday will have given everybody, you know, fans and, and owners and everybody new hope that they can do it. Just like as, as Simon will know, you sometimes you get you have a little bad run. One win can change the whole mood, can't it, Simon? It can it can it can just give everybody a lift at the right time. So we'll keep keeping on their results between now and the end, that's for sure. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stay up. <laughs> 
No, well, hopefully he does. Um, but his former club, <coughs> Worthing, are currently having an t- awful time of it at the moment and their playoff charge is very much started. Um, the Reds are now down to fifth after a run of one winning six. Um, what do you put this downturn in form down to, Steve? Obviously, people look at Adam Hinchelwood's departure, but the not the rock, but the dip in form did very much kind of start while he was still in charge. Didn't yeah, it? they they did lose a couple of games, you know, in the last. I think maybe lost two of the last four with him, with him still there. They then actually had a very good win up at Chelmsford in Aaron Racine's first game mm. as interim manager, which gave everyone hope that they would just sort of sail through to sort of finish second or third. But they've had three defeats since then, two at home in, inside a week. And then they lost 3-1 at Chippenham last weekend. I spoke to Aaron in the week and he was saying that the Chippenham game was the first one of those three where he's felt they kind of deserved to lose. He thought they were a little bit unlucky in, in the two home games. A few things went against them, but he was quite pleased with the performances and they were creating chances less so at Chippenham, uh, which was a cause for concern. He was um, he had four games in his first in 13 days to kick off with, which didn't give him much time to sort of implement some of his ideas on the training ground. He's now had that. Now he's had a, he's had eight. He, by the time they play Bath on Sunday, it's live on live on uh, TNT Sports on Sunday, uh, home to Bath. So by then he will have had a full week and a little bit more to work with them on the shapes and patterns and formations and things. So we'll see if that's made a difference. But the, yeah, they're, I mean, they're still right in the playoff zone. They're fifth, but they do need to get things moving again if they want a, a decent sort of playoff semi-final at the end of the season. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't obviously don't follow Worthing as closely as you do, Steve, but at one stage they're absolutely flying in second. Is there a danger that they could drop out of the playoffs altogether? Yeah, it's, but I mean, the points wise, it's possible. You know, if you, 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 they need to, they can't afford to keep losing, basically. They need to win more than they lose from here on in. Their, their aim sh- should be still to finish second or third. Um, so I'm interested to know you, you know, I know Eastbourne Borough played them twice over the, mm. over a sort of transitional period for Eastbourne. D- did you see them and did you rate them highly? I thought they were the best team in the league that we played with, out of everybody. Mm. We, we, we should have beaten them in the cup. And their goalkeeper, I think we made him internet famous. He had millions of views with all these saves he made. Um, and that was a 1 0. And then in the league games, I think they beat us 4 0 or 3 0. And they absolutely mm. played us off the park. They were unbelievable. That was the sort of transition of Mark. That was Mark's last games. But mm. they they were so well drilled, so organised. I think the, the issue they've got is they've got a very thin squad. And mm. I think. They've had a few injuries, uh, mm. obviously, mm. players. Um, but, you know, I, I, for me, they're the best team I've seen this, year, this season. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, well, fingers crossed it turns around for him. Uh, but one uh, player who has been in action uh, is um, Ollie Pierce, And he's been uh, turning up in a quite um, unusual area, isn't he, Steve? Somewhere that I didn't expect him to see. <laughs> Played for England C on... Mm. Tuesday night, I think Tuesday, it was, think. Yeah. Uh, against Wales C. Uh, I must admit, I don't know a lot about international football at that level. I don't really follow it. It seems to be a little bit hit and miss. You know, they don't seem to play a lot of games, actually, unless I've just missed them. Uh, but he was a sub for England, came on midway through the second half and apparently made quite an impression. England actually lost, but he, he certainly livened them up, tried one shot at goal with a, with a bicycle kick. Uh, which shows you what a sort of confident player he is. You know, he's, mm. he's, he's had he's had such a season with Worthing. Um, the girls have dried up a little bit for him lately in the in the little barren run they've had. It's been a barren run for him as well. But he's had a great season. Uh, deserves that call up, and hopefully it won't be the last for him. I suppose the the worry for Worthing fans might be that he's now, you know, with the season he's had and the England Sea call up, is he going to get snapped up by someone at a higher level? That's always mm. comes with the territory, doesn't it? But um, Worthing fans will hope that he's at uh, Woodside Road for a long time to come. But no, well, well done to him for the call up. Absolutely, well done, Ollie, indeed. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Lewis has been back on the continent, flying the flag for Sussex in Europe. Uh, this week saw the Rooks travel to Oslo in, I believe, their final uh, group stage game of the Phoenix Trophy. Uh, how did uh, Tony Russell's sides get on, Steve? Yeah, they. Uh, we can we can say that Lewis are the only. Sussex team to be unbeaten in Europe after Brighton had, <laughs> Brighton had a couple of defeats at either end of their 
campaign, didn't they? Slightly different mm. competition. This is the Phoenix Trophy. They were specially invited into it along with um, other clubs around Europe, you know, sort of semi-pro and amateur clubs around Europe. Uh, in their group of three, they've come through unbeaten, two wins, two draws. Uh, that means they're off to finals weekend, which will be in Italy. I believe it's the second week of May. Four teams, the, the four group winners, I think, go through. Um, so I imagine you're looking at semi-final, uh, third and fourth place playoff and final. Ch- chance for a real sort of celebratory end to the season for them. They've they've suffered a little bit in the league, possibly as a result of these games, maybe not. You know, we, we don't know how they'd have done in the Isthmian Premier um, if they hadn't been in, in Europe. But um, So they're sort of mid-table, a little way off the playoff race in the Isthmian Premier. But such, an, such a great experience for their fans. Their fans went in decent numbers to Belgium earlier in the season when they played mm. there and to Norway this week. Uh, uh, it's very snowy, freezing apparently, but i um, seen some of the pictures and they looked like they, all had, they looked like they all had a good time. So uh, great, um, great experience for the whole club. Absolutely. Well, best of luck to them. Um, do we have any idea who they could meet in the knockout round? Might be putting you on the spot a little bit there, Steve. You are putting me on the spot and I haven't got a clue, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go into that on the next non-league podcast. <laughs> well, if that doesn't get people involved for the next one, Steve, I don't know what will. Um, finally, uh, the Premier League may be set for an exciting end of the season with Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal all involved in a tight race for the title. But an even more hotly contested battle can be found at the top of the SCFL Premier, can't it, Steve? Um, how is the fight for SCFL honours and promotion to the Isthmian League South East shaping up? Yeah, quite exciting. It's been a bit weather disrupted in the past month or so. Uh, a couple of teams have only played sort of two games in the last month. Um, it looks like probably a two-horse race between Stenning and New Haven. Well, they, they would be the two favourites to win it. Point between them uh, at the moment. Um, New Haven have been top a lot of the season. I think Stenning have just edged them off at the moment. Um, Mark Dunford's favourite non-league team, Crober Athletic, are hanging in there as well, probably inspired by him mentioning him on the last podcast. They are, they're they about five points behind, but I think they've got a couple of games in hand, so they're still with a chance. Hassock's fourth, probably a little bit too far behind. But, of course, the teams there are, are, are you know, all everyone in the top five in that division, uh, second to fifth, play, get through to playoffs and, the, and are going for a second possible promotion place to the to the step four, Isthmian in South East. So lots to play for for a lot of teams down there. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Absolutely. It's shaping up to be a very exciting end of the season. And as per tradition, Steve, uh, we need to pick a Sussex non-league game of the week. Um, off podcast, I've already told you mine, but you teased us with what yours could be. Go on I wonder who's that <laughs> <laughs> What are you going for? I'm going to go for the league we've just been talking about. I'm going to go for Stenning at home to Eastbourne United Association this week. Stenning uh, will be looking at that as a good chance to get a good home win. Uh, the shooting field. Eastbourne United are one of the teams just still in with the chance of playoffs. So I think that will be a decent game there between two teams that uh, we like covering in our papers. Uh, so Absolutely. good luck to those two. Your, your, um, your, your own choice of game of the week, might it be in the, in the sort of Horsham district at all? Oh, it might very well be, Steve. Uh, Horsham uh, are playing uh, Hastings United on Saturday. Uh, and I think it's also this Saturday is non-league day, if I'm not it mistaken. Is. yes. Yep. Um, before we move on to my game of the week, Steve, um, do you know if Eastbourne Borough are potentially doing anything to mark non league day? I know you're away, uh, you're you're down at Slough, uh, Simon, but have you got anything to entice fans to get down to Slough with Borough? Um, no, even that was on league day. Slap on the wrist for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's fair enough. Um, the next Friday, then. Say again? We'll make up for it next Friday. Oh, absolutely! And, the, and the, we all, i should say—we all the borough fans travel to games in good numbers, whether it's non-league day or not, don't they, Simon? Yeah. They could get away support this season. We've we've been um, we've been filling a coach and and a half um, this season, and it's uh, good. Even I mean, we even had fans there on Tuesday night. We, we think you know that, that, that's a that's a long way for, uh, mm. for someone to come and yes. get back at three o'clock in the morning. Um, Absolutely, but no, we'll 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 have a good couple of hundred at Slough tomorrow, and uh, you know we're taking a lot more fans that are coming to us. Even Yeovil didn't bring that many people to us this year, so yeah, um, you know, our fan base is growing. The, the thing that I 
I think I don't know if I said this, but I'm most proud of is last week we probably had a hundred sixteen to twenty year olds, and that's mm. that mm. was the sector that I really went after. I went and took giving talks at a lot of the schools because I wanted more and more youngsters to come because that's that's the future of our, oh, of our family. yeah. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Um, well, yes, uh, the reason why I bring up non-league day is that I know that Horsham are very much holding something non-league day related at uh, home to Hastings on Saturday in the Isthmian League Premier. Um, again, uh, a game that could have a massive bearing on the playoff race. Horsham in third, Hastings in eighth, but Hastings have just come off the back. I think it was, what did we say it was? It was their, well, they beat Hornchurch on Tuesday, didn't they, Steve? And it was quite a landmark victory. Yeah, beat Hornchurch. First team to beat Hornchurch in the league since mid-December. Uh, and so Hastings went about a month without a game. They had about four called mm. off. Since then, they've done really well. They've got through to the Sussex Cup final, win and two draws in the league. And Chris Agutter is very much eyeing up a playoff place himself. Absolutely, yeah. Well, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. As I say the Isthmian Premier League is very much shaping up to be a tight division this year. And um, I should also mention uh, Horsham FC women. Uh, on Sunday, they beat Shoreham in the, I'm going to try and get this right, I've got written it down here, the SC, uh, something like that, the Sussex Women and Girls Football League Challenge Cup Final. Forget the abbreviations, otherwise I'll be here all day. Uh, they will play uh, either Pagham or uh, Salt Dean in the final, which I think will be held at Sussex HQ at Lansing uh, on the 18th of May. So very well done to them. Um, they're on the back page of County Times this week, so pick up a copy. Uh, if you have anything uh, interested in Horsham. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Simon, this week. It's been an absolute That's pleasure. Right. And best of luck to this week. And, um, yeah, we will see you all next week. Then, Thank you very much, Steve. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. you very much for listening. We'll be back when we're back. <laughs>